Okay, y'all been wondering about what we're doing with these coon. This is our coon shack. We got some furs that are all dried and ready for the market here. We just got to bag them up behind Tony. He brushed out this nice coon right here. It's a nice big sow we got the other day. You can tell it's fully primed. Look at the belly hairs on that thing. That's going to be a in the select A, B range. Silver. It's got a little yellow in the neck, but probably one of the better coons you're going to see. So the first thing I do is I make sure there's not any blood around the neck. If there is, you need to get it combed out. Um, otherwise, you'll flush holes through it. First thing I do is I flick it out, usually a couple times. Get all the dust and dirt off and roll it out. This is the knife I use. I don't remember what brand was this. You know, I do not remember. No I think clue, it might be a WebKey brand. It's the best knife I've ever had. It's heavy. You can pull the fat away from the coon. You ain't cutting holes through it. It's got a nice curve on it, so it doesn't cut. This is the Necker. They recommend people to start out using this, but. I would not. I would just start out with this right away. It's going to be a lot easier once you learn this. This is a really good knife for pushing around the arms and pushing the fat off in spots that you can't get this big knife in there without cutting holes through it. So, all right, first thing I do, make sure this is tight. If it's not tight, if it's loose like that, you'll cut right through the hide. So get it tight, put your belly on it, cut the cartilage of the ear, just cut right through like that. This is the most important part of the hide. This is where the little heavier fat is. It's a little stickier there, so you're gonna have to cut. But I'll just get some of that fat off there. Okay, first thing you do, cut all the fat off around the ear. Just push it down. This knife. It's a night and day difference from something like that. You can just push this stuff down nice and easy. Cut right up here. You see how he's like pulling to the side? So he's cut slicing rather than just pushing right there. Yep. He'll push at the bottom. Yep. but Right here is where you push. Yep. But up here you gotta, you'll get the hang of it once you do it a little bit. And when you do these, about right in the middle of the ear, down is what I would say. So you do that bit right there, turn it, get it tight. Cut this off. See how nice and white that leather is? It's fully prime. All right, cut this cartilage off this year. Cheek fat. Just push this right down right here. Don't get too close to the arms. If you do that, this is about as far as I'll go right here. If you get too close, you'll cut a hole in there. Nice and clean. Nice can't clean leather. What you're seeing there is a bullet hole the way it looks. Yep. Yeah. This is a sow. Sows are way better to flesh. They got clean leather. They're not beat up like a boar. They don't have a bunch of holes in their back from mites or worms or Okay, right here when you're doing you can clean the lips up a little bit if you want, just like that. Right here, it's real thin, you don't need to do this. All you gotta do is take the sharp side of your knife and just push it down. Right to the arm. This will peel right off. You go right to the arm right there and you stop. Push this. Same thing on this side. Just 
push it down. Okay. And this is a sow, so big difference. She's got her tits you gotta watch out for. You push into them with your knife, you'll split this hide all the way down, and then it'll cut right in half, and you're gonna lose value. So just take your time down here, and just you can just lift it right off with this knife. See right there, you can see that tit. Yep. Right there, here. There. If he would have pushed hard there, it would have went right through. Yep, and then it pushes your hide down, you got a mess. <clears throat> you can pop them. If they pop, that's fine, but see right there? Yeah, you can hear them. Yep, if, you, if it splits in half, then you just got a mess. <clears throat> okay. This, you're just pushing. You're not cutting nothing. Just push it down. Okay, this is where I use the necker. He likes to switch knives here because yep. he, that knife's pretty dull. You can just push he's right just pushing. With it. Yep. Just See, push he's pushing a lot harder now than he normally does with that other knife. Yeah, just push through there. Get all that cleaned off. The top of that front leg there ain't the end of the world because we're gonna cut all. Yep, mostly gets cut an inch or two of that off when we go to board. Right through here. That's a good looking coon though, it's nice and white. Yeah. yeah, this is probably one of the better ones we've seen. Okay, clean up the belly. Sometimes too, if you can't get the fat off the arms, take them, put them right here. You gotta be a little careful with that, because if you push too hard on that hide, you'll split it that should. arm. It doesn't happen often, but if you go eight. Use your dull side. Turn it around a little bit. Okay, you're good there. Not on the bottom. Keep this knife. Push it off. You don't see a pop the tip there. That's in the window, so yep. that ain't gonna be the end of the world. We'll cut that off on the board. It's a big coon, so take a little bit. Good weight loss program. Yeah. You'll lose some pounds if you do this all fall. Yo, that's a lot of work. Start out with a 2X coon, a lot easier. You don't want to go into one of these nice big ones right away because this is going to be your higher dollar coon here and you don't want to put a bunch of holes in it. You know, great damage. Careful. If you ever get a hole, be careful around it because it'll just keep tearing. So try and work away from it. That cleaned off. That's the window. Okay, tail. Go on each side of the tail. Get that all cleaned off. You see a little bit of, see he's getting down to clean leather there. He just took that little bit of fat off. I don't know if you can see that, but that's what needs to come off. Yep. That back rear end is what's, like that's like the, that. what takes the longest to dry. There's the fat. Like that. Yeah, right, right around here. Right there, he's going to pull all that off. Yep. You want to see that good clean white leather. Right here. So peel it off that angle. Turn it, come over here. Right there. And just go right down the middle. Got to be careful here, you, you can break these tails pretty easily. If you do, it ain't the end of the world. It really doesn't matter unless you're getting a tan for something where you'll use the tail. But if you send it to auction, it ain't a big deal. Alright. That's what it looks like. Talk to them about that head, Tony. They're going to ask about that. What's that? Anything above the ears? Yep, right here. Yep, it's not that big a deal. It's Shave a little the cartilage bit. of the ear off. And work right down from there. It's just a little bit of membrane and it dries out oh, nice. Oh. Oh, so that's a 5X. I would imagine that's going to be a select. 
All right, well, let's uh, board it. So that's normally what I do, and then Josh, I'll just set them right here. And we're on board. We'll show you board. All right, here's our boarding station. It ain't much, but gets the job done. Hey, yeah, uh, we've got a large board here, big cone. These are our marks for uh, size. This is 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x. We've got a little sh cheat sheet right yep. here that we use. You know, it tells us all our measurements. Right there, so this one might make the close. 5x. Yep, so yeah, I would admit that's going to be a 5x. 38 and up. <laughs> okay, so I like to set the board down like this. Grab your cone. Put it on like you put the sock on or something. Leave the nose over a little bit like that. These boards are a little different than our other boards we're using. We got a lot of boards we bought from a, or a fur processor in the area when they went out of business. So these are a little different. You can squeeze, they're a little wider up on the neck. Yep. So you can't pull too hard. These are, uh, I don't remember where we bought them, but they're a different. We got them at Schmitz, didn't we? Schmitz. Yep. So just don't go crazy pulling too tight. Yep. But I like to get it here. Grab your stapler. I'm trying to, well, you can see our, I don't know if we're quite going to make that. I don't really look. Eh, we, we can try for the 5x mark. Get her pulled down. Pinch a little. I like to put my stapler at an angle like this so their staples are easier to pull. That's important because if you drive them home, yep. they're hard to pull out. So take this. Ooh, see, I did a little too much angle there. One right there. Go to the other side. Kind of pinch in this leather. This will suck down when it dries. It's kind of important to keep a good uh, presentation on your window. And I'll just run this little triangle here. You end up cutting off. Same thing on the other side. Oop. Okay. So, just for video purposes, normally I trim it off right now, but we'll flip it over. When we skin, we leave a little bit of that back foot right here. It's kind of nice for stapling. What I like doing on this back side is just a staple right here and about one right there because you're going to end up trimming a window right there. So don't put your staple too far where you're going to trim off. Try to keep it even. That's all I do on this side anymore. It's nice just having four staples when you go to pull that thing off the board. Flip it back over. We like to use these razor knives from uh, WebKey. Really, really nice. Just wavy. Cut this off flush. Yep. Of course, my knife's dull, so I'm going to change that quick. These are knives, so you're sharpening knives all the time. I would yep. really recommend this if you're not good at sharpening a knife. Some people might not like that, the old school guys, but they're cheap and uh, sharp for at least a dozen coon. Right, back to this. Oh shit. Back to this coon. Trim this off. Don't leave too much meat past this, because if it curls when it starts to dry, it stay wet there when it's drying and it can spoil. I pin the tails because they're a lot easier to pull than putting all those staples in. If that happens. You can, you can shave them off with the grinder. It won't go in for you. When it got skinned there, you can see that we nicked there. I'll just put another pin right on there. Keep it even.
This basswood board's really nice compared to our other ones we have. The basswood's nice and soft, so these pins go in. Get it down to the end, that last inch, I'll just put one on the end. So, before I cut the window, what we do is put the coon down. You need a pliers or whatever you call it, channel lock pliers like this. Grab that nose square, and then you'll rock it over your board. And you'll get a nice, clean fit. Not overly tight, but we made our 5X mark. Yep. It's a good looking thing. Take your knife, trim these off so it doesn't get fat. That's a long haired coon right there. That's nice. This one's almost to the point where we don't have to trim it, but I'm going to just take a little off. That's all you need to do there. And the window. And we nicked it on the flesh job, not the end of the world on this one. This is that last set of tits here. I go above that a little bit, which we'll clean it up. We're not taking a lot off. This little bit, that, I'm going to leave that. That's a little bit of a. Or, uh, I don't know, it ain't a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. So that's... But what you're doing here, so this one is ready to go on the drying board. Yep. The reason we're doing that, we'll show them that quick, is when they go to buy these coon, when they grade them, it's just an inspection window right there. So they can see exactly what you got going in there. Yep. They want to see the flank and see how mm -hmm. heavy the guard hairs and underwool is there. But they can tell everything they need to just by looking and at the leather, right the back. See, this is a pretty clean coon. A couple insect spots there, but... And then most... Some of these boars, they get a little rubbing up here on their neck, or they're scratching. You'll see more of that later in the year. Later in the year, you're going to start seeing, you'll see holes all down their back. That's when they start the Springer coon, you know, they start getting springy in the neck. Those, with the market we have now are maybe some of them are worth putting them up but it's been pretty tough i mean you get that's that right there is going to probably grade a 5x select a b that's probably out of 200 coon you're going to see maybe 10 percent not even if that yeah five percent of your coon are going to look so we'll like just that. hang this up here in our situation here it'll take five-ish days to dry you yep. we got a little bit of sawdust on it so i'll wipe that off you got wood stove right here, fan. Let's just show, show them. So, blue coon. This one's done. Yep. This is an earlier coon. The leather's done. She's dry. Yep. We'll just show you how we on board. Quick. It's pretty easy. This is you. Pull the belly board out. Hey, that's something we cannot show. So that was an important thing we almost missed. Yeah. You gotta put a belly board yeah. in, or you will struggle because it will dry so tight to that board that. Uh, it, when you're putting them on tight, yes. You'd have to rehydrate it yep. to get it off. So you just slip that in there, put it up to the nose almost. Yep. And now it's ready to hang on the board. That would have been bad, especially yep. on a good coon like this. We would have been rehydrating that to get it off. So back to this one. Pull the belly board. These are our older style belly board that we got from that yep. fur dealer that used to be in business around us. These are a lot nicer, but these work. <clears throat> got a mess here, like always. I like this pliers Push small light. enough. I take the two staples out of each leg here. Try to throw them in a bucket so I don't have them sticking in my shoes. Definitely one of the earlier coons we got this year. The smaller like coons more. prime later. That's probably a 2x at the most. Pull the pins out. That's why the pins are a lot easier on that tail because if you put staples in there it's just it yeah. can be a pain to get out. Then I always put three across the bottom. Use this little needle nose. Pull them out. Get 
like these smaller two are a lot easier to work with too. The leather's thinner, so it's easier to get in that staple. Then yeah. I got this highly sophisticated nail pounded into this yeah. old beam in my barn. Yeah. Right here, got a little bit of nose stick in there. You hook it on there, it comes off real nice, especially if you do a belly board. And then... And your finished product. Like you can tell, this is a younger coon. It's blue. It's pretty thin, yep. like the flanks there. But we're gonna send her up. Yep. That was like the worst coon I could have picked for that. Yeah, I know. That's as blue as can be. Well, we got uh, some new ground tomorrow since deer hunting's over with today. Um, probably. Two, three hundred acres of really good ground we've been waiting to get on for a couple months um we got a couple guys coming we got a camera guy coming and then we're gonna have some drone footage and we're gonna try and put up that sucks that happens yeah it happens a lot actually we're gonna try and put up a pretty good number of coons tomorrow for you guys so if you guys got any questions um that you want us to answer tomorrow we're gonna try and do the best we can to go through and talk about things more. I know we haven't really done the best no. at that. But yeah, if you have any criticism, yep. send it our way. Yep. Anything to make our videos better. Yeah. Because this is, it's kind of not that easy to go out and film these coon hunts because there's a lot going on out there, which is the main reason why we like doing it so much. You never know what you're going to run into. Mm -hmm. And the haters, that's very entertaining. Some of the stuff you guys say. Yeah. It's really, I laugh really hard at it. Okay, well, just send us everything um, in the comments, and we'll, uh, we'll try and point it out tomorrow and explain things the best we can.